You're listening to another episode of the Anavivo podcast. Thank you for your time. Oh, it's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Anavivo podcast. I am your host, Tim C. Miller of Beautiful Woodby Island, and I'm sitting across the incense filled office today with my bro and co host, Sizzly Steve. What to do? What to do? And today we will be bringing you another short. We are looking forward to that. We actually have a couple that we are doing all today, and so I'm um, not sure when they're going to air, but I'm excited for you all as you listen through these. If you are listening for the first time, you'll know that, uh, or you won't know that <laughs> the shorts is the 30-minute segments where we talk about things that are um, usually off-topic from the main podcast. So hopefully you enjoy them. They seem to be getting a lot of uh, views and listens, and uh, and it's also hosted on YouTube. So for those of you who can't listen or don't listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else the podcast is hosted, uh, your favorite listening station, uh, Sizzly Steve over here also uploads them to YouTube. So you can listen to them on YouTube with a nice drifting image of fireworks. Fireworks behind the... Or a hot tub. <laughs> or, or a hot tub in the last one. <laughs> So, all right, well, we'll kick it off today. I believe the topic of discussion today is Bitcoin. Yes. So or you, cryptocurrency, I guess, in you general. You caught me early in the morning, so apologies for my grogginess. Ah, the sizzly Steve groggy voice. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, so this episode, let's talk about Bitcoin, but in particular, um, the Bitcoin I bought our family for Christmas. Yes, Stephen gave all of us as a family, I'm... One of five boys, and most of us are married. We've got kids. Mom and dad um, gave us all a share of Bitcoin. How many years ago was this? Like seventeen? So, um, in November of two thousand fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. Wow. I awesome. bought ten shares of ten dollars each, so a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin for all of us. Okay. Yep. So, which was a great gift. Very and very. Intuitive, considering my parents had no idea what was going on, but also for those of us, what was 2015? Bitcoin was still really popular, Un- unheard of, kind of yeah. unheard of, but but also like crypto in general was unheard of. <laughs> was unheard of. So we're all like, oh, of course, Stephen. Stephen's the youngest. He's always got the gadgets. He's always got the cool tools. So that was a cool gift. Yeah. So in 2014, I graduated high school, mm. and I learned about Bitcoin. Oh. And I said, this is so dorky and cool. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I did some more research, and, you know, I was looking. I forget what it was. I think I just You were gone. 18. You were, you were looking for the latest snake oil out there. Yeah, you know, it's Christmas. <laughs> I felt bad about not having a gift to give everyone I was broke. So I was like, you know, I can get $10 of Bitcoin. And it turned out well, so. Yeah, um, tell us about these numbers. So in 2015... When no one had heard about Bitcoin yet, I bought a hundred dollars worth after fees and everything. It ended up being about eighty-four dollars worth total. Mm. And then I divide that ten ways: five brothers, um, two parents, three spouses. I don't think Nate and Sarah were married yet, but she came to Christmas, and so I got her mm. one at that time. Yeah. Okay. So that was in two thousand. It pays to be part of the family. Is yeah. What you're saying. <laughs> she joined at the right time. <laughs> Not that it's worth, you know, <laughs> millions or anything. Okay, so then 2015, I gave it to you all. I said, here is some Bitcoin. Everyone said, great. I don't know what this means. I said, that's <laughs> fine. Just put it in your safety deposit box yeah, and don't forget touch about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> which, we, which we all promptly did. Not only did we forget about it, but for those of you that don't know crypto, crypto requires a, um, a set of keys, uh, digital keys, for you to retrieve said money. And so not only did all of us put this crypto away for safekeeping we also all promptly forgot our keys <laughs> yes and where they hit it and yada yada yeah so luckily i saved it all but uh in 2017 is when bitcoin went public on the uh, stock market mm. so that's when the world really heard about cryptocurrency um bitcoin got really popular and then all these other cryptocurrencies started coming out like mm. um 
Dogecoin. Dogecoin. And <laughs> Ethereum and all that stuff. So um, in 2017, because it went so popular and went on the stock market, the traction exploded. Mm. Uh, and so in the beginning of 2017, so, so let's say when I bought it in 2015, it was $330 per Bitcoin. Per Bitcoin, but $84 worth you bought. Yes. Okay. So I bought 25% one bi- of a yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. One, one whole Bitcoin was 337 bucks. Okay. Yep. And in the beginning of 2017, it was $1,100. So it had tripled. Wow. In two years. But then by the end of 2017, it peaked at $18,000. Good grief. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it, it was just like super popular. Everyone was like, oh my goodness, it's public on the stock market. We can do this. If only we could find ours, we would sell too. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so uh, it kind of went up and down. It hovered. Uh, around nine thousand dollars, but then in twenty twenty, Bitcoin does something where it halves and it becomes twice as hard to get. Mm. Uh, half as many Bitcoins are available, and so it usually goes up in price. But also, what happened in twenty twenty was COVID, mm-hmm. and everyone's home, bored <laughs> with nothing to do, thinking they can be the next uh, crypto king, millionaire, billionaire. Yeah, yeah. and so it goes from nine thousand dollars up to sixty seven thousand dollars. Grief for uh, one Bitcoin, sixty-seven thousand. For so one you Bitcoin, bought, you bought one quarter in, of a Bitcoin. But you bought one in for three hundred. I mean, you could have bought one for three hundred thirty-seven dollars. Oh, yeah, that would have been nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and it went up to sixty-seven thousand dollars just a few years later. Yeah, but literally five years later. Wow. So our value of a quarter of a is Bitcoin. Twenty twenty. I know. <laughs> I, I have dreams about middle school begging my parents to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Please, mom and dad, listen to Sicily, Steve. <laughs> so at $67,000, our quarter of a Bitcoin was worth about $17,000. Wow. I know. At, at the peak. This is in COVID. This is at the peak in yeah. COVID. Yeah. Man. Why do you think I'm podcasting now and not working? Yeah, because we missed the peak. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I found all the keys and turned them all in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so right now it's hovering around $25,000. Oh, spam call. My apologies. And our value of they heard us talking about Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Is is about six thousand dollars. So our family collectively has about six thousand dollars in Bitcoin right now. Our one the the collective twenty. Collective all yeah. all yeah, ten yeah. shares together. Yeah. Um and yeah, so that is it. And it's pretty much our family still doesn't know what Bitcoin is. <laughs> and I I have since transferred it from pieces of paper that they lose into yes. Little NFC tags, yeah. Tell or us, NFT tags. Tell us lose. about that. Uh, the process, or, or for those that aren't familiar with the basics, how what a wallet is, what a crypto wallet is, what um, what a uh, key is, what that looks like generally, and then and then tell us how you gave it to us originally, and then what you gave us last was it last year, two years ago, Christmas? Okay, yeah, fifteen, and then two thousand twenty-one. I gave you a new. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way that cryptocurrency is stored is just like a normal bank account. You have your bank's routing number. Okay. And then you have your private um, account number. Right. Makes sense. In crypto, you have your own personal public account number because each person is their own bank. Right. And then you have your private account number, which is your PIN number to send and receive money. Right, and part of this process involves things that we could probably not get into today, like the blockchain and, yeah, and pointless the stuff. handshakes between the computers and why it's why it's a transparent and decentralized form of currency and, and, and therefore, theoretically, more stable and more safe. Uh, yes. But we, we can... We know that China that. is going to take it over. But anyways, <laughs> so the, the way here first. <laughs> to secure it is just like your bank account. You never give out your personal private account number right. and, and if you never do that then no one can ever take your money right so what we did was we printed them out never used them online printed them out on a piece of paper and stored them in a safety deposit box so that mm. you know no one can hack a safety deposit box unless you're physically there right everyone proceeded to lose it not everyone but some people lost it and so they didn't they weren't sure which we're not going to call theirs. anybody out here on the air <laughs> so in 2021 i Put them onto a little plastic coin. Yeah, that was cool. Where'd you get those? Amazon. 
It was a like just a plastic coin that you could personalize. Then I mod podged. <laughs> you mod podge the paper key onto these yeah qr plastic. code and, and uh, oh that's NFT right a qr tag. code and the qr code had the instructions of how to access our yes thing yeah 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 <laughs> so anyways so now it's on a coin but so it's speaking of way, ways to store your money mm. so people have been trying for years to secure their money because as soon as you type it in online Right, it's available. Yeah, if you have some sort of malware on your computer, it, it might be looking for that kind of stuff. Um, so people, what they do is they buy their Bitcoin, they transfer it to something that's never been used online, an account, mm. and then they print that account off or put it on a USB drive or something and store it physically in the real world somewhere. And so there are some very famous cases that I w- would like to go through here sure. just to wrap up. Is one of them the guy that lost his computer at the dump? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> because I remember that story. I, I think I also remember, and you'll, you'll go through it, but I think I remember him actually finding it, but then it not having what he thought it had. But go ahead. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So <laughs> famously, people have been saving it physically in the real world, but then what happens, you know, if you have a fire mm. or mm-hmm. <laughs> your friend throws your computer away? <laughs> yeah. So um, these are, it's called cold storage is when you... Physically, physically store something. Physically store it mm-hmm. offline. So there are some famous cases of people lost their Bitcoin through ignorance or improper storage. The first one is Stephen Thomas. Oh, Stephen Thomas. He's a former chief technology officer of Ripple, which is a cryptocurrency exchange. Mm, so he should know better. So he should know better. He was awarded 7,000 Bitcoins. Oh, my gosh. In 2011. So oh, the, my gosh. They're worth like a dollar. You know, or in pe- 2011, or and he had how? What'd you say? What was that number? Seven thousand. So he had seven thousand. Imagine what that is in 2020. You can do the quick math in your heads if you're a genius like Sizzly Steve. If you're not a genius like old Tim over here, what is seven thousand? Seventy thousand times whatever it was seventy thousand dollars a piece. Uh, it's. 142 million. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is probably way more at its peak. Yeah. Know, yeah. Three times out of its peak. So, in, <laughs> here we go here. Let me see what it was in 2011 here, really quick, just for posterity. Just for posterity. It yeah. It wasn't even on the public market. No. Back then, obviously. Um, but he got them. I mean, they were, they were, they were pennies. I remember in 2014, it was like a, a dollar. Well, in, in the in the in this particular case, it was part of his compensation too, as as a employee, I'm sure. So yeah, and it's brand new, and he was excited mm-hmm. to get paid. And it's seven thousand bitcoins at the time was probably like one hundred fifty bucks, bucks, sure, or something. So he he made a little animated video explaining how Bitcoin works, and they paid him in Bitcoin to do that. Wow. Okay. Okay. He put it on an Iron Key USB drive, which is a way to cold store your Bitcoin. Okay. It displays your public key on the thumb drive so that you oh. can um, receive money whenever you want. Nice. But you secure it with a password so that you need a special password to get to your public okay. or private key. Sure. He has since forgotten the password. Oh, no. He has three tries until it wipes the entire hard drive. Oh, my gosh. He has <laughs> used two guesses out of the three. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> and it's estimated 140. 42 million on there. So oh. what I would do if I was him. <laughs> <laughs> a little free advice from this unknown podcaster. <laughs> is I would sell that thumb drive for, you know, $10 million. To a hacker. To someone, yeah. Yeah. Because it's worth $142 million. If someone can hack it. That's a good point. Yeah. Actually, that would work two ways. One, you get to meet a really good hacker. But two, you're at least getting some value of it. Yeah, $10 million bucks. I don't know who would buy the, that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that can actually probably hack it, I'm sure, and figure it out without it wiping. Yeah. So, 142 wow. million. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's oh, not man. as bad as. Not as bad as our next <laughs> case study. <laughs> so, James Howell, a 36 year old engineer from Wales, in 2013, he threw away a hard drive. This is the guy you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That contained private keys to a Bitcoin wallet worth over, oh, with over 8,000 Bitcoins. Right. Which is uh, more than the last guy, 158 million today. Good grief. He has been trying to get permission to excavate the landfill where he threw away the hard drive, but he has yet to get permission. So if you have $158 million sitting in a hard drive somewhere in the middle of the Coopville dump, 
Right. <laughs> What's what, it worth it to you to yes. excavate? Would that you invest entire... millions to try to get that back, or would you just? Especially like, considering it's a hard drive and it's in the dump, I, I'm sure it can't last forever. Forever. Yeah. I mean, even the best forensic engineers trying to repair something that's been water damaged and rust and elements, you know, and I don't know, man. That'd be. I mean, you're you're putting a lot of money into some work that may not pay out at all. One hundred fifty-eight million. You think that when the dump heard about this, they said we're gonna look for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the guy on the payroll who knew exactly where it was because he's in charge of doing that work every day <laughs> took it home. <laughs> all right, so that's you know we're up to three hundred million in lost Bitcoin so far. Good grief! So Laszlo Hanyek is a software developer from Florida. In 2010, he spent 10,000 Bitcoins. So 2010 this is earlier than the first guy. Okay. So literally like cents on the Bitcoin. Yeah. 10,000 Bitcoins, which was worth about $41 at the time, for two pizzas. He was the first guy, right? To buy a physical good with a Bitcoin. Okay, yeah. As opposed to most, most people use Bitcoin... To invest. To invest or to, to do things across international line that illegally. you can't do with monetary, real real currency. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times illegally, um, black market stuff. But but he used it to buy physical goods here in the United States, and those physical goods for 10,000 Bitcoins was two pizzas. He posted on a forum because there was no way to, like, there's no, like, Pizza Hut wasn't accepting Bitcoin, you know. Right, right. So he posted on a forum and said, I will send someone... 10,000 10, if they Bitcoins, buy me. If they order me two pizzas to my address, yeah. <laughs> and he did it, and he paid them. And somebody out there is laughing it up. <laughs> Worth $280 million right now. And you know the guy that got it spent it on something else stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the final one I have here is Gabriel Abed. He's an entrepreneur from Barbados. Mm, a pirate. Yeah, 2011. So the trend we're seeing here is early days of Bitcoin when it's only worth pennies. <laughs> <laughs> when people don't know what they're holding. Yeah, he only lost 800 Bitcoins. Oh, yeah. only. 800 times 70,000, whatever. Yeah. It's nothing. Crazy. $25 million worth after his colleague reformatted his laptop. Oh, no. <laughs> why does another man touch another man's laptop anyway? I uh, know. But also, why Reformat are you, it. Why are you reformatting <laughs> your laptop? Because his calling knew, <laughs> and what he did was take his hard drive out and put a reformatted one in, mm, probably. Mm-hmm. But in 2011, 800 bitcoins is worth nothing. So. Wow. Good grief. So that's why you store your bitcoins properly, and you don't lose track of it, and you always Tim. have a backup somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Those are good things uh, to store. And we appreciate you in this Christmas gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, it's slowly going up a dollar a dollar a year. <laughs> well, it went up a lot in just a few years ago. So, well, good. So, what uh, what is your plan with your cryptocurrency? Um. Well, I'd hope once it grows large enough, we can start pulling, you know, a thousand out of it every year. Mm. If it's ever going to get that big. You don't have to work with me anymore. <laughs> to go on vacations, yeah. <laughs> yes. It will be nice if it ever just keeps going up and up. And I and I think it will just because of the nature of the having situation mm-hmm. where it gets um, twice as hard to get every four years. Yeah. And so that just makes the demand for it. Because they're not producing anymore. Yeah. Is that right? I mean, you can mine Bitcoin. I think it started out right. with like there was 50 million bitcoins ever. Okay. At the very beginning. And every 4 years it becomes twice as hard to get them. And so the first 4 years 25,000 bitcoins were mined essentially. Yeah. The yeah. next year 12,500, the next year half as much, half as much, <clears throat> half as much indefinitely forever. Mhm. Until they're not getting a bitcoin per block, they're getting half of bitcoin in right. a quarter. And then now there's not even uh, pretty soon. There's not even going to be a Bitcoin produced every year. Right, it's only right. Be a percentage of a Bitcoin. Mm. So, well, that's interesting. You know, now nowadays we've got Bitcoin ATMs. Um, that yeah, you Coinstar. Can just, yeah, at Coinstar. Yeah, the different places that you can just go in and give away your real hard-earned money that also is just printed 
and fake and not based on gold anymore <laughs> and um trade it for uh ones and zeros and so yeah well now in the u.s every crypto transaction you do is tracked by the government so right right so no no more fun yeah unless you manage to have i mean you can't even take a cold storage that you had years ago put it online to send money to someone without right putting in your driver's license right and so unless you do it in the caymans yeah it's all taxed mm-hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> it's all taxed but uh i think that there's a huge flaw in bitcoin which is like if you have too much computing power mm. over the entire bitcoin network then you could fake the bitcoin ledger sure and start faking transactions and i think china's on the verge of having majority control of computing power so uh, yeah i think in the future if they were malicious with it they could just if yeah <laughs> <laughs> if they were malicious with <laughs> ruin the whole thing i'm hoping not before i get to use all that money on vacation but <laughs> <laughs> yeah well when you when you read you know china buying 700 acre farms outside of a military base in the middle of the dakotas yeah. you're like one why are we allowing a foreign power to buy american land so that we can tax do. Them. Why are we allowing them to do it right next to the, <laughs> our nuke launch sites? Yeah, but it's for innocent purposes, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just let them launch a bunch of balloons over us. And well, what do you think about other cryptos before we wrap this up? So, so Dogecoin's interesting because Elon Musk he he t- just sent out a tweet. You know, this was a few years back, and. um and then it skyrocketed overnight, and then he yeah. sold a bunch, and then you know, yeah, it's he, called market manipulation. Right, right, right. And so, like any currency, any any investment, there's a way to manipulate the market around it. Um, do you have faith that these will, these being all of cryptocurrency in general, will continue to to rise and become a a currency we use in the future as a one world government? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the Bible talks about as one world currency. And you can see the U.S. is trying to get on to cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. They're trying to change from the physical dollar to a yeah digital dollar. Um, so I think maybe not any of the bit- currencies that we see today will be sure. around. Bitcoin's the poster child of it because they were an early adopter. But Yeah, it's like the Model T. It's not going to be around forever, but mm-hmm. it's the blueprint for it. Um so I think one day cryptocurrency is going to be the ultimate currency that everyone uses. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be any of the ones that we have today. Hmm. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Sizzly Steve, for another riveting morning here on The Shorts. And um, we are going to jump right into the next short here. But um, as my kids would say, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Anavivo podcast. We welcome your feedback and ideas. You can learn more about us by simply Googling the word Anavivo. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. I am a licensed real estate broker with Compass Real Estate and a nationwide real estate matchmaker. We consult with you for free, find and vet the right real estate professional that specializes in the area and niche you need, are paid by that professional, and they get clients like yourself who want and need their unique specialty or winning track record. If you or someone you know is in the market to buy or sell real estate anywhere in the U.S., don't simply web search the highest paying advertiser. Let us use our licensed experience to find and vet the real and best professional for you. It costs you nothing but a phone call or email with me and it saves my clients financially and emotionally. I'd be honored to serve And you can reach me direct by email at tim.c.miller at outlook.com. And as always, to God be the glory.